Hi everyone, um, I'm Debbie from Rocket Spark in Cambridge, and today I'm chatting with Fiona from Alpha Street Kitchen, um, also based in Cambridge. Um, I'm going to start with um, if, just asking Fiona to tell us a little bit about your business before COVID-19 hit, Fiona. Uh, yeah, so we are a restaurant and bar in Cambridge. Um, I suppose um, we, some people would classify us as fine dining. I don't think we are, but, um, and uh, we serve boutique wines, craft beers, and that was my one source of income before uh, COVID-19. So, um, yeah. Okay, and so business is going well? Yeah, yeah, we were taking it well, absolutely. Um, and um, Cambridge is a great little town, um, it's growing. Um, we do rely on tourist trade, um, so we sort of noticed in February that that was starting to, to drop off, and we were like, ooh, shoot. Um, and then March, absolutely. Um, we started to have a little freak out, and um, that's when I started, I already had a Rocket Spark website, and um, started to talk to Grant, about um, how maybe we do takeaways and put that online. Um, so I had started to work on it when we got the sudden announcement of, of lockdown. Okay. And um, so so previously you sold nothing online and then no, with no, it... We sold some gift vouchers online through our okay. booking system um, and going through, through the website. But um, no, nothing else. Nothing okay. else. And so how did, so how did um, the announcement, that initial announcement of, okay, you need to close your doors in a week, um, affect you and your staff, you know, your, your mindset? <laughs> yeah, well, I don't actually think it was a week. I think we were given two days. Um, <laughs> to be honest, we knew it was coming and we were pretty grateful it came quickly because um, business was obviously dying um, and the longer that went on, the more resources we were using. So um, that wasn't ideal. Um, what was a shock is, because um, I had started slowly to build an online shop, I was like, oh, there's no rush, I'll get to it, you know. Um, it was, we always thought that we would potentially be like Australia where we could trade through, um, kind of what we ended up doing in level three. So it was a massive shock that um, we were fully closed down. Um, the team have been amazing on the whole, so um, just fully understanding um, and, you know, getting back up and running, it's just like, right, what needs doing? Let's do it. Um, so that's been really cool. Um, and it, it's not without its challenges, that's for sure. Yeah. And so can you just tell us a little bit about what you've done um, to keep business ticking along? during yeah. the lockdown um, until before level three, I guess. So, well, before yeah. level two. So level four and level three, how, you know, what, what did so you level, do? Um, level four, we used the time a couple of weeks. We just had a bit of a break. Um, and I also partnered up with one of our wine merchants, Red and White Cellar, who were really innovative um, and found some workarounds in the liquor licensing laws. So I partnered up with them um, and market their wines and I took a retail cut from those wines. Um, and that was a lifesaver. Um, it turns out Cambridge likes wine. And <laughs> yes, they do. <laughs> a lot. And, um, and, you know, it's a supportive little community and I think they, where they saw that they could help they wanted to. So um, I think we were one of the top selling restaurants in New Zealand for that, that wine promotion, which was amazing. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah, <laughs> little old Cambridge yeah. up some restaurants and stuff. So that was pretty cool. Um, and that continues on. So um, that will almost be a permanent feature for Brilliant. us. Um, and so that brought in a little bit of income over, over the period. Um, then uh, when we got closer to level three, I really worked with the Rocket Spark team um, and built the online shop myself to sell takeaways. Um, and that was a massive learning curve. Um, it was easy when I knew how. It was just working out sort of exactly how. Um, and luckily I already had the Stripe payment gateway set up 
because I was selling the gift vouchers and that sort of thing. So um, I was part of the way there, I suppose. Um, yeah, that definitely, and, it definitely does um, make it a bit easier once you've got those key um, integrations set up, um, accounts set up mm. for those. So mm. Yeah, one of my next integrations, I was looking at it, I'll probably integrate with Xero as well. Um, I use um, Zero for the accounting, so that will be the next thing I'll tackle, I think, because um, it's been a little bit messy accounting-wise, but that's okay. Mm. Uh, the, um, and so that, what that allowed us to do was day one of level three, we were selling takeaways, we were taking pre-orders. Um, so one of the, the great things for us was um, that people were able to, because um, of functionality that you guys built, was people were able to order their takeaways um, up to a week in advance. So we were already getting that money. Um, we were new volumes that we needed to prepare to a certain degree um, yeah. and we could manage it. Um, so it really helped me manage, um, or keep, not manage, but keep on top of wage costs and what we were ordering so that we, we didn't have any wastage and that sort of thing. So um, yeah. that was pretty cool. Um, so we've been doing takeaways um, just of, of some of our meals and then we've also been selling meal packs so they're um, sort of gourmet chef prepared meals that you just take home shove in the oven um, or um, boil in a bag kind of thing um, sous vide style um, that we've done and they take no longer than half an hour to be ready wow. um, and they've been going really really well so we've put now switched and put those on a pre-order system um mother's day was huge we did a beef cheek uh slow cooked beef cheek with that one um and that was the response was amazing overwhelming blow me away um so they're now um a permanent feature of alpha street um and we release one every sunday night um for pre-order for for thursday onwards collection so yeah it's um so a lot it's of innovation challenges and opportunities yeah a lot of innovation by the sounds of things hey so so meal kits kind of hey like um, yeah like meal yeah we call them meal kits um alpha yeah. at home meal kits um yeah and they um yeah you can buy them for two or four people and um yeah it's, people have been having you know friends over or whatever when, since we've got to level two and um buy a red and white seller who we partnered with um they can also have a bottle of wine with it um so easy. <laughs> and yeah so it's, it's really cool because there is still um and i think it will remain for a long time um a little anxiety for some people about coming out and sitting in a restaurant so um if we can get to those people with our products well awesome yeah and so are you offering that um pick up or delivery? We were doing delivery um, in level three, um, but we have stopped that in level two. Okay. okay. Um, but yeah, delivery is just a little bit hard for us to manage um, staff wise um, when we're running a restaurant as well. Yeah, definitely. Um, and so, how did you spread the word about? you know, all the new innovation, um, your new offerings, um, your new menu, because you, you created a special menu for the lockdown. Yeah, yeah. Um, which we're still transitioning out of. Um, doing a whole new menu is a costly and yeah. um, exercise and it takes a long time. So um, we've got new dishes coming every week is the sort of the way we're doing it. Um, the how do we market? We um, I've done a couple of uh, emails to our database. Um, I have quite a large database which I've been growing for a while, which um, really came into its own, I suppose, under lockdown. I haven't utilised it properly um, previously, but that is definitely going to change. Um, you can see when I sent the email. Um, there was a spike on my Rocket Spark dashboard of, of visits and transactions that very day. So yeah. <laughs> um, it's, a, it's an amazing um, tool, email marketing. Yeah, yeah um, you can just put it, you're just like, right, got it. Um, so mental note, must do more. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, um, and Fiona, um, what are you using MailChimp for that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And that's integrated with your website? Yes. 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 
Okay. Um, and yeah, that has been, so I've had a, a Rock at the Stip Art website for quite a while and we've always had the pop-up come up um, to join join our mailing list. So yeah. that's um, always fed through. Um, and we've also got a booking system we use now, Book It, um, which isn't integrated, um, but we can obviously download the um, emails from all our online bookings. Yep. Is because part of the terms and conditions is that um, we have permission to email them. Um, so we add those in as well. And um, tell me, how has the response from your customers been um, since the onset of lockdown? Um, do you feel that they've been supportive or? Yeah. yeah. Uh, the support is incredible, is um, just amazing. Even people. Um, Obviously, people's incomes have been, some people's haven't, um, some people's have been significantly affected, but um, even just quick little messages on Facebook and um, smiles in the street saying, oh, we're thinking about you, it's, it's been huge, actually, it's, it's yeah. extremely humbling at times, yeah. um, and, but the response to the takeaways was, blow us away, um, we had absolutely no expectations we we're like mm, we'll just give this a crack we'll see how it goes yeah um but yeah it was it, it blew us away we had no idea what was coming um and so it was really cool so takeaways are now now permanent with us as well as the meal kits so um awesome. that's absolutely a feature we're retaining yeah so there is a little bit of um positivity that's come from all this <laughs> yeah yeah look it, it absolutely has um the meal kits were something I've wanted to try for quite a while. Um, but, you know, when you're running a seven day a week business, it's yeah. kind of hard to get those things off the ground. Um, and with Hospo, there's, there is constant staffing shortages. So how do you actually get some of those cool things off the ground? Um, yeah. And this was really the, the kick and butt that we needed to do it, which was good. Um, and yeah, look, the takeaways, I sort of kicked myself. I'm like, God, why didn't I do those four years ago? um but you live and learn don't you and yeah. um yeah the whole um lockdown and and stuff has given me a real opportunity to revisit what we're doing and, and revisit the business and have a think about it and um there's definitely more to come online oh it that's, be, yeah i'll be expanding the shop it's okay that's really <laughs> exciting um yeah just as long as you keep that ravioli going, I think um, <laughs> everyone will be happy <laughs> in Cambridge. Yeah, I, oh, the smoked potato <laughs> ravioli, it's so funny. Um, you, you, you'll never be able to take that off your menu. We can't, we can't, we can't. Um, we've, we made a really tough call yesterday, actually, because we were just changing out the menu and just, and we're changing our style a little bit as well, okay. to be slightly more casual, and we were sort of, made the call we were like oh we took the lamb ribs off and we know we know what's going to happen but we're just prepared to defend it yeah. but the ravioli we kind of all looked at each other and went oh, oh. God, we can't do it we'd be shot we'd be shot so um yeah <laughs> Uh, I'm glad to hear that it's not coming off but at the same time yeah. um I think you guys have shown time and time again that you can be innovative um and your ideas are amazing, your, your presentation, everything you do just seems to be, um, you know, at the highest level. So oh, thank you. I, I'm really confident that, you know, <laughs> people I'm sure trust in, in you guys and whatever you decide to do, you'll have that support. So that's really good. Yeah, that's, that's sort of what we're, we're hoping on that. Um, we've built, you know, a reputation of quality and definitely. Um, and deliciousness and just because we're changing a little bit we won't forget those core values you know um, yeah definitely. And, and great hospitality it, that's what it's about yeah and um do you have any advice for people looking to sell online for the first time so if they're in hospo or you know uh, the restaurants or cafe business and they yeah. they haven't um done so during lockdown do you think yeah. there's still an opportunity for them you know what is totally. your advice yeah, totally. Um, there's absolutely an opportunity. Um, through the lockdown, we saw, uh, well, through, sorry, level three, we saw a full spectrum of people, from people that just were like, mm, we're done, you know, there's no virus, it's fine, to people that were still picking up takeaways and a mask and gloves. So, um, 
or you know asking us to leave it just on the front doorstep and, and step away and you know we're respectful of the whole spectrum of people um and i don't think those behaviors are going to go away you know anytime soon so absolutely get online um from um, an internal operations perspective for hospitality have your packaging sorted um make sure it looks good um we got lots of comments that um our packaging was great um that it's compostable um and all those nice things so people actually feel good about receiving the products um and really we've had a few misses so think about how your food transports um and mm. how long it's going to take till these people eat it so um we didn't serve steak or red meat because it just sweats and it's not good. So really have a think about um, of, of how that end product's going to end up with the customer. Yeah, so a takeaway menu, it's important to have, you know, to separate them, hey? So your, your in-house and your takeaway. Yeah, so we need, you need to have lots of, from our perspective, um, we don't have a huge kitchen team, we don't have a huge kitchen um, and capacity to do the prep. So, um, for us, there has to be a big crossover between our takeaway menu and what you have in the restaurant. Um, but there are some items that you can only have in the restaurant um, to encourage people in, like the oysters, and uh, which we're really not well known for, and um, fish dishes and steak and that sort of thing. Um, yeah, and then there's going to be some things on the takeaway menu that just aren't available in the restaurant either. Um, yeah. So, yeah, but the, on the whole, we hope that they're very, very similar. Okay, so, um, just one last question. So, um, how do you see your business going forward? Uh, really kind of, well, I think it will be similar, um, but we're certainly taking a far more casual stance um, to our dining experience. Um, we want to be more accessible to people. Um, I think people certainly only saw us as a, a special occasion place and um, that's not how we want to be seen at all. So, um, yep, you're going to see slightly more casual from us, um, but still with uh, delicious flavours, definitely the chef's twists on things. Um, you cannot cook that food at home uh, you know and um, we'll continue to bring um you know some great new zealand boutique wines and craft beers um so you can always try something new awesome and it's, it's and more online yeah and it's, <laughs> and it's also it's local which you know you're, you're yeah. supporting other local businesses um at the same time new zealand businesses. yeah um, i think um yeah i think you're right there debbie what is massive about restaurants and people I don't think people really realize is the ecosystem around a restaurant is is huge um so all the you know might have invoices and piles like this each week from so many different suppliers that we use from wines and beers to um Boutique products like cleaved and buffalo and um, cheeses and meats and you know so we we do spread a lot of money around um, and it does support communities. That's, oh, definitely, yeah. yeah. And um, yeah. you definitely do help the um, community spirit, can I say? So <laughs> you know by providing yeah. beautiful food, um, mm. make a lot of people happy. So that's also yeah. something to be really Yeah, proud of. I did see um, somebody talking the other day. They were like, well, you know, HOSPO hasn't had a lot of support over this time. So um, I am very grateful for any support that we do get. And, and Rocket Sparks being incredible. The boys have been amazing. Um, but and girls. You know, imagine <laughs> a town or a city without restaurants and bars and cafes. Oh, yeah. You know? Um, so it's pretty important... Um, sure, there's going to be some that fall over and it's pretty sad, but it's pretty important that the majority survive because it's the life and soul. Yeah, and community. It's all about yeah. you know, community um, and everyone getting together and supporting each other. So that's great. Thank you so much for your time today, Fiona. And um, yeah. good luck for, for what the next couple of weeks or months bring. I'm sure it's, um, everyone's looking forward to seeing what you guys come up with. So yeah, yeah. watch the change. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Fiona.